Welcome to Hooks Outdoors. Today, wait till you see what we have in store for you. Come on, follow me. In today's video, it's a number 10 can oven. I hope you enjoy this episode. Remember, Hooks Outdoors is not responsible. If you hurt yourself while making this project or you cook anything and become food poisoned, we are not responsible in any shape or form for what you have done after you have made your own number 10 oven. Enjoy! So in today's project, you're going to need the following items. An old cookie sheet, some sort of a bull ring, some screws, leather work gloves, a safety can opener, that's the one that opens on the side, a cookie dry, I'm sorry, a cooling rack, a tape measure, some drill bits, a pair of tin snips. It's great if you got these duck bill pliers, a hammer, a sharpie, a heavy duty lineman's plier that you're going to use the the cutter portion and the plier, but the cutter portion is going to be to cut these wires on the cookie cooling rack. I need two number 10 cans. If you happen to buy your vegetables or maybe some pudding for the family in a number 10 can, you'll only need one because then you'll be able to save your top. I'm going to need two and uh, that's because we need the bottom to make our oven door and we're also going to use a small portion of the barrel tin. Uh, to put the bull ring on there and then you'll also need a uh, drill motor of some sort okay what we're going to do is is we're going to take this number 10 can and we're going to make that our base or our main oven I should say okay so what you have to do is if this has not been cut with the safety style cutter you need to go around uh, and cut that rim, okay? Otherwise, your oven door is not going to fit correctly. So I want, want you to go ahead and, and do that. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to take, I need a door. So this can, we're going to safety cut it so that we have this piece. As you see, I already did that to save us some time. And since this was already safety seal cut, see how nicely that fits on there? Is it, it's, it just snaps right on as if it, the can had never been opened once before. So that is a super great thing to have happen, okay? So now we have our main structure of our oven. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make the top and the bottom out of the cookie sheet the bottom we need a six inch by six inch square and the top we need a five inch by five inch square and then we're going to bend a half an inch up all the way around the top portion and that's to hold the coals and the bottom is so we can put it on our cook stove and also to keep the tin can or the oven from rolling and we can use it then like a Dutch oven as well with the top we put coals on the top if we're just using a campfire we don't have our Coleman stove or our backpacking stove with us and the bottom again it keeps it from rolling okay so I'm going to show you right now After you cut this out, the six inch by six inch, you want to drill some holes. It, the size doesn't matter, and I'm going to tell you why. The last time I did this uh, project to make this video, I tried to use the tin from here. It's way too thin. I didn't drill the holes, and the heat didn't go up through. This acted more like a heat deflector when I put it on the stove. 
So my original one that I built, I used a scrap piece of steel that had a bunch of holes in it. And I didn't realize that that was a benefit until the uh, earlier this week when I totally messed up making one for a video for you. So this is going to become our bottom. We're going to take our screws and we're going to fasten it to here. All right. The top. You're going to notice I am not an aesthetics person. Uh, I'm more about functionality. So you're gonna notice it's not perfectly square. I've bent it up, bent the corners around, okay? The cookie sheet material will cut with the tin snips. It's tough going, but it will work. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I cheated. I have the tools, I used the air cutting saw. So this is gonna go on the top. It's small, but uh, it holds coals to get the heat. Now remember, our oven's small. So now this piece is made. Now we need a rack in our oven. That's where this is going to come in. This is from the Dollar Tree. It's just a simple um, cookie cooling sheet that you put your cookies on to cool off after they've been in the oven. Um, every year around Christmas time, I buy five or six of these and I keep them around just for odds and ends projects. Uh, I guess I'm kind of silly that way. But simply, you're going to go like this. Mark it with your Sharpie as to where you're going to cut it. Give me one second out of camera here. So when it's cut, it's going to look like this. Now you slide it in. And now you have your oven rack. So you have the heat space here and you have plenty of room here to bake your goods. When it goes on, it's strong enough to hold whatever you have. Now, if it's up too high, simply trim some more off. It'll set a little lower in your oven. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to assemble the top and the bottom with our screws and then I'm going to cut a piece of this to make a strap for our bull ring for our oven door and we'll be right back. Okay, let's see how this turned out. I think it turned out really nice. So here's our top. As you can see, it's fastened with the two screws and that'll be up here. Collect our coals. Here's our bottom. It doesn't extend really far and uh, see how our holes are where there's the gap here. I hope you can kind of see that gap right there. There you go. You can see a little better. All right. We've got our bottom in. And as you can see, when it's loose, you can put it wherever. Now, one of the things I forgot to tell you when you cut that rack for inside here, make certain you cut it and you leave that gap right there. Okay, so that when you put your lid, or I'm sorry, your oven door on, your rack's not in the way. I leave, uh, it's about to my first knuckle. Um, I leave about that much room. It's quite a bit, okay? So, get a rack in there straight. Now, here we go. Again, not centered. Oops, but that's okay. We got our bull ring on there. See, I used a little piece of tin. So, the oven door fits on there like so. Alright, now, here's the important thing. Well, the, everything's important in a project, I guess, but make sure you burn this, put it on a fire, burn all the zinc out and everything, okay, so you don't get sick. So I'm going to put this on the Coleman stove, and we're going to go ahead and we're going we're gonna to get it hot, get it heated, burn it out, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how I use tin foil, and I make a small tray, and we're just going to go ahead and do us up some biscuits real quick. All right, so I'll see you in just a little bit. It's my famous foil cookie sheet, cookie sheet that I make every time I make biscuits. Uh, we're making grands today, so I will only be able to fit two at a time with those. 
if you use um, the regular two biscuits you can actually get four of those little guys in there and yeah, we could probably squeeze a third one on here I think yeah let's do it all right so we got three biscuits on there and the oven is preheating you still have to preheat we're gonna slide those in there so when you get ready to open your door on your oven make sure you have leather gloves on because it's gonna be hot okay take your tray and I got to straighten that out that's good put your tray of biscuits in there slide them in all right put your oven on check your timer we'll see you in about 10 minutes okay it's been 10 minutes uh, I have not cheated and looked so we're going to look together. This is our first peek inside. Again, leather gloves. And we're pretty doughy. Like real doughy. So we're going to turn our flame up and see if we can heat it up. And uh, we'll let them go a little longer. All right, let's check it again. So, after 30 minutes, I know that they'll cook, um, but I think what needs to be done is we need to drape some aluminum over the top and trap the heat today. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this a win. I know we didn't get them fully cooked, but we're going to go ahead and call this a win. Uh, they're, they're pretty, pretty close, folks. I mean, if you look... They're, they're flaky in the middle. They're not golden brown. But they're edible. So I want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, what a great experience when you build things yourself. I normally do use my other one on a uh, twig stove. Maybe it's a little hotter. That's tendency of why it cooks faster than the propane. But I think if we were to drape aluminum over it, trap the heat, it would have uh, cooked much better today. Light breeze and cool out. You know, it's always a challenge when you're cooking outdoors. So I'd like to thank my old subscribers. I'd like to thank my new subscribers that came over. I'm hoping from Blackie Thomas's channel after he put the little snip of my oven there. Um, it's October. Let's get out. Let's get outdoors. And uh, hit the like button for me. Please bump me up. Share this video with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't. And until next time. Take a kid outdoors this week. Thanks for watching.